morning, uh, what I'd like to talk to you about is just to give you, you're probably sitting there as a, as a prospective um, student um, or somebody maybe doing uh, uh, GCSEs or A-levels um, and you're thinking about making decisions about what course you're going to study at university. So what I hope to do this morning is just give you a little bit of a flavour of what we do here at Ulster and to um, sort of give you a, an overview of uh, what the course content is, how it's delivered, and really the, the kind of breadth and depth and diversity of subjects that we tackle within product design. Um, so, so the course itself um, is uh, quite broad based and uh, we offer a sort of a flexible approach to um, uh, study pathways. Um, so uh, you come on the course in first year and um, you really uh, don't know very much about the whole topic of design. Um, so first year is very much like a foundation in design and we allow you to um, experiment with a number of different uh, disciplines and areas through short uh, sort of projects, uh, very quick projects, um, to give you an idea of what sort of area within the broader product design uh, sort of area you're really interested in. So people who come on the course, um, typically um, there, there are two sort of main strands in the course. So there's the traditional sort of product design, industrial designer, and that sort of, um, uh, sort of uh, moves over into things like interaction design, uh, um, uh, and then there's the designer maker uh, sort of strand of the course and on the designer maker strand of the course um, that looks at things like furniture design, lighting design, spatial design. Um, more and more we're getting students who are interested in sort of critical design um, and design for debate and that's uh, that, and I'll talk about that. I'll show you some examples of each of these. The design for debate is, is essentially where like a fine artist producing a piece that's put in a gallery that um, is there to uh, stimulate a debate or to, to cause a conversation to be had. Um, design for debate is similar, so you design an object or an artifact that's uh, probably never meant to be manufactured but is there to uh, uh, start some sort of a conversation or a, a debate in society about that, that sort of topic. Um, so as I said, uh, students get a, a chance to sort of play in all of these areas in the first year. Um, first year is very much about skills and about bringing people up to a, a kind of level uh, field. Uh, applicants to the course come from a, a very wide sort of a, a, a gamut, um, but uh, typically we see students from either an art and design background or from a technology and design background and uh, very often uh, students will have done both as well. Um, uh, students from an art and design background, we don't typically see that they have done a lot of three-dimensional design um, and that's just down to our education system, it's down to your school, the facilities that you had there, your teacher, their interests. Um, so you don't necessarily, if you're applying from an art and design background, need to be able to demonstrate three-dimensional design. Um, if you have some there, if you have some ceramics or something like that, that's excellent, but um, it's not a prerequisite. Um, you can, as you go through the degree, you can specialize in any one of these areas really from year two on. You can pick the, within uh, each sort of uh, project. Uh, it's broad based enough in terms of deliverables that you can approach it as a product designer or a designer maker, furniture designer, whatever. Um, and that's very attractive. Uh, uh, you can sort of specialize from second year on, or if you're thinking of a career path that maybe, um, is more suited to general, a uh, sort of more generalist approach is suited to, like you want to become a teacher or you want to go on and do uh, uh, further academic studies, a master's, PhD, et cetera. Um, you don't have to um, uh, sort of align with any discipline. You can take projects um, using different materials and design approaches uh, right across the gamma. Um, so yeah, breadth and depth, um, I, I think it's, it's something that comes back all the time from our external examiner um, is uh, the output uh, that we have is very broad and very diverse. Um, and we think that's a very, very healthy thing. Um, and that's done, um, 
we believe not at the expense of the depth of inquiry that goes into those the, the, into that work and into those projects. So you can come on a course and you can uh, choose from a wide range of areas of study, um, but then you're given uh, the latitude to go into those in, in the same sort of depth that you would if you were, say, on a specialist product design course or a specialist um, furniture making course, whatever. Um, if I start off with uh, kind of uh, traditional product design, uh, this is an example of a student's project, um, and this is very much traditional product design stroke industrial design. Um, and uh, what you have here is, uh, this is one of our final year students um, designed, uh, he, he looked at the problem of how people are recovered um, in emergency situations. And by talking to all of the different rescue services in Northern Ireland, all the uniform services, um, he identified an opportunity um, for designing a wheel, a wheel system that could be attached uh, using a universal attachment um, system to any of the sort of uh, uh, sort of recovery stretchers that the um, uniform services use here in Northern Ireland. So, um, you know, you're, you look at this, there's, there's a lot of CAD involved in it. There's quite a bit of um, a sort of thought in terms of how the components are engineered, how they're engineered for um, manufacture, knowledge of manufacturing process like, like injection molding and uh, sort of tube metal manipulation. So this is this is kind of when people think of product design, this is typically what you think of. Um, so uh, where have I gone here? So um, yeah, so if you look at it, um, it, it's 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 pretty much a user centered design process. Um, again, product design isn't uh, solely about the artifact or the object. It's very much about the people who interact and interface with it. So the typical sort of design process for product design or the, the, the kind of way we work is that we define a problem from that problem and we can frame an opportunity. We sort of design a process that we're going to use to address that opportunity. Um, and then that results in some kind of a, a finished art, artifact, a product, a service. Um, uh, more and more you're finding the product designers aren't actually designing objects. They're actually designing online experiences. Uh, they're designing uh, sort of uh, for financial institutions, uh, customer service. Um, so so the, the output doesn't necessarily have to be a three-dimensional artifact. It can sometimes be um, software based as well. Uh, so this is kind of the design process uh, for product design. It's very much about identifying early on who the stakeholders are in any given sort of scenario or problem. Um, it's using sort of empathy tools and ways of interviewing and uh, interrogating those stakeholders to really understand what it is you're designing, uh, how it affects each one of those and what they actually need from your solution for it to be meaningful for them and for it to actually enhance uh, their, their, their situation. Um, so it's, it's, it's quite a structured uh, uh, sort of approach to design. Um, there's lots of techniques uh, that we use in terms of empathy tools, like uh, um, uh, interviewing people, uh, creating day-in-the-life video diaries, uh, photographic essays. Um, so the, the kind of skills you need for traditional product design are, are you need a really inquiring mind and you need to be a good communicator because um, your end uh, result, uh, what you design, is really only as good as the brief that you write. And that brief's only as good as the information you extract from the stakeholders. So if you want to be a product designer, you have to be interested in people and you have to be good at interacting with people and getting a story out of them, getting the narrative out of them that will help you to design something and, and have insights uh, about the problem and that allow you to design something that's innovative. Uh, here's an example of like a photo essay. Uh, this is where uh, Jonathan went along to one of the emergency services and uh, uh, visually recorded um, their existing equipment and the environment that was used and et cetera. Um, CAD is a big part of uh, industrial design, uh, product design. Um, you can be a product designer without being particularly sort of proficient in CAD. There are other ways of communicating your design intent. Um, but uh, certainly if uh, CAD is something that you enjoy, uh, you've maybe met it in your um, technology and design course, or it's something you kind of haven't met yet, but you aspire to do, um, we uh, introduce CAD right in first year and uh, you're formally taught it first year, second year, 
um, and our students come out uh, very proficient. Um, uh, CAD is great, it's a, a virtual way of designing, but then we need to turn that into reality and uh, product design is about prototyping. So here's Jonathan's design um, and he's gone to the bother of actually 3D printing all of the elements of it and creating a, a, an assembled finished prototype. And that's really important because uh, as part of that kind of design cycle, um, uh, you need to be able to take your ideas to prototype them to test them uh, both physically and also to test them with your stakeholders that um, what you thought the problem was and what you thought your solution was actually makes sense to them and they understand um, uh, how you're trying to solve the problem and they can inform that process with you as well um, so that you're not kind of designing in a vacuum as it were. So that, that's typically product design stroke industrial design within the course. Um, and that might be something you're interested in. Uh, uh, many of the students, um, Jonathan was a technology and design student when he came on the course and you know his, his sort of strengths are in engineering. He did his placement with uh, uh, an injection molding company. Um, so uh, that's kind of, a, a lot of technology and design students um, sort of opt for the uh, sort of more traditional product industrial design route within the course. Uh, this is a very different project now. Um, this is our designer maker sort of strand. This is Elliot, um, one of our, our uh, final year students from this year as well. And uh, as a designer maker, you take a very different approach. Uh, so rather than uh, sort of focusing on uh, stakeholders and a problem and a commercial opportunity, um, uh, the designer maker strand is much more about uh, sort of a personal journey of discovery that involves working with the material and working with processes. Um, so it's, it's much more aligned to craft or maybe even fine art in, in, in that uh, sort of respect. Um, so in, in this project, um, Elliot, who for his day job, um, you know, uh, Elliot did his placement with a, uh, a very high-end uh, sort of furniture design and fit out company called Deluxe, um, who are based down in Portadown. And for his day job, he designs furniture for places like New Scotland Yard, which has been uh, sort of reinvented as a gentleman's club. So, so he, he's very much hard edged. He uses CAD a lot. He um, uh, uh, is very precise in how he works. But as a contrast to that, for his uh, sort of final year um, project, um, he wanted to just do something completely different to sort of uh, um, broaden his portfolio in, in the final year. Um, so his project is really about looking at traditional vernacular making uh, sort of crafts um, uh, from Ar the island of Ireland um, and to try and reinterpret those crafts into a series of uh, contemporary objects and contemporary uh, sort of artifacts. Um, so what you see there in the photograph is that thing in front of them, uh, it, it's actually a, a bench um, and it's... Uh, woven in willow over um, a steamed um, subframe. Um, so a, a very different type of project to uh, Jonathan's, which is, is much more traditional product design. Um, Elliot went on to look at, uh, he, he taught himself uh, uh, weaving in willow. Uh, he taught himself some basic um, ceramics. Uh, he did some uh, throwing of pots, uh, some turning, some, uh, uh, experimentation with glazes etc and he was supported in that by our colleagues from ceramics um, so so what, one of the really good things about um, you know coming to study in an art college environment product design is very often taught in an engineering environment an engineering department one of the really good things about doing it in a, a, an art school environment is that you do have this sort of interdisciplinary crossover um, so, uh, you know, for uh, Elliot to jump the fence and go down to ceramics and, and uh, play and experiment in their area is very easy. So you find our students do that. They go to photography, they go to ceramics, they go down to textiles and fashion, um, and they draw on the technical uh, and, and sort of academic resources there um, to make the projects more sort of uh, fulfilled. So uh, the final thing he looked at was um, forging, uh, and he did that off-site. He found a bl uh, blacksmith and uh, worked with him for a number of weeks to kind of 
pick up the basic sort of skills. So, so that's, that's kind of what design your maker is. Um, uh, it's a much different thing to sort of traditional product design. Um, moving on, this is, this is a very different project. Um, this is um, uh, very much a spatial uh, project. Um, and you have a student here who has taken the idea of recycling um, shipping containers and once that's been done before, he, he kind of takes it to the next level and, and he says, okay, well, if you made these things modular and then you made them so they could be clustered together, so three of them become a bar, three of them become a retail space, you know, four become a workshop, a manufacturing space. Um, and then we offered some sort of a design surface service um, that helped you to take these elements and put them together to create not just individual things, but actually, uh, places, uh, spaces um, uh, that, that uh, sort of were meaningful in terms of their architectural content as well. Um, so it's, it's quite an ambitious project and it's a completely different scale, you know, from the handmade. This is very much virtual um, and uh, it's a different set of skill sets. Um, most of the visualization you see here was done in SketchUp. Um, it's not a package that we cover on the course. We tend to um, stick to uh, SolidWorks. Um, but this is a package that the student over um, the three years of the course picked up himself and used it to great effect. So you see the, the sort of um, uh, combination of these elements together to create spaces, to create architecture, to create uh, spaces with a sense of place. It's a front elevation of the building and then some color renders. Um, to sort of give you an idea of um, what it is when it's populated with people, um, application of graphics and, and dropping it into sort of a cityscape. So again, the kind of skill sets here are, um, you know, modeled in SketchUp and then manipulated in Photoshop and Illustrator um, to sort of add in layers of information into it. So again, uh, very different. This is a spatial approach. It's kind of bordering on interior design stroke architecture but still with a strong product flavor where the, uh, the modular container is the keystone of what the project is about. Um, design for debate then. Um, design for debate is uh, essentially where you, uh, rather than designing an object that you see ever being made or putting into manufacture in any kind of volume way, uh, you're really taking a social issue or a, a theme you're exploring it through some sort of uh, a designed artifact, uh, but that artifact um, is designed so that it can be put in a space, uh, like a museum or a gallery, et cetera, or on, online uh, through social media. Um, and it's designed solely to get people talking about a subject, to open up a debate about something that the designer feels is important in society. So this was in response to one of the RSA briefs this year and, and the student um, wanted to explore um, the kind of the notion of nostalgia and what nostalgia is um, and how objects have the power to kind of instill very powerful emotions in people. Um, so what she ended up here through the, the kind of uh, the medium of furniture design, she designed this kind of very eclectic uh, furniture piece and it's a collection of different drawers that are brought together um, and she went back to her childhood to the experience of um, going to her granny's house and her granny's house was a, a bureau, a sideboard, and uh, she would rummage through one of the drawers in the sideboard and in it were all kinds of things that her granny sort of felt very close to. Uh, so photographs and bits of jewellery and uh, reminders, ticket stubs, things like that. And she remembers then the act of sitting down with her grandmother and her grandmother telling her stories about the objects uh, and the narratives that kind of went behind those objects. So she designed this piece to kind of capture that experience and to get other people thinking about um, the sort of the power of objects to uh, sort of instill or, or to solicit these really powerful emotions. Um, and uh, she took it forward, uh, the design process, sketching, uh, card modeling, making, she then took it into, I think this is um, uh, modeled in Fusion 360 or uh, it's one of the uh, uh, Autodesk um, uh, 3D solid modelers. Um, she took it right the way through. Uh, 
it was designed to be made as a finished piece um, and she had started sort of negotiations with our technicians um, as to how she was actually going to fabricate it and materials and uh, sort, sort of manufacturing techniques etc uh, but because of COVID this year um, she wasn't able to access the workshop so um, it became a virtual uh, uh, project um, so she had to upskill in, in uh, CAD to be able to deliver this as part of the project, um, she saw this being um, exhibited in a museum uh, and, and it being an interactive uh, sort of uh, uh, artifact that you were encouraged to open the drawers, look at the objects inside, talk about them, and debate uh, with the person that you're, you're the, that's either uh, supervising the exhibition or uh, with uh, someone that you bring along. So a grandparent might bring a child along to the exhibition, whatever. Um, so she designed this really nice little, it's a very personal booklet about that experience with her grandmother. Um, and it was something that, that would accompany the exhibition. Then it would be like a, a sort of accompanying and an explanatory uh, uh, publication with it. Um, she also, um, lots of our students, because of the nature of what we do now, products are smart. They have user interfaces. They have web uh, components to them. They have apps. Um, so here, um, uh, Oriana um, uh, created a digital presence for the exhibition as well, and an on online way of people being able to submit their own uh, sort of artifacts and to digitally curate them in their own uh, set of drawers um, so that other people could come and visit their experiences as well. So it's a really a very thought-provoking, nicely framed and contextualized project. Uh, we work in all kinds of materials here. These are some older images of working in uh, the, the piece. Um, uh, is a, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a library, a shared library for a, a, a house of multiple occupancy. Um, so you can exchange books backwards and forwards as you leave the house in the hallway. This, this kind of strange piece of furniture lives there. And, you can put books that you're finished with and take ones that other people are finished with. And then the other piece with the strange white legs um, is a, it's almost like a tabernacle where you can uh, showcase books that are of great importance or significance to you. Uh, these are just some little studies in, in very fine materials, um, looking at uh, really um, how we interact with materials, how we interact with form to communicate functionality, etc. Uh, so, so little, little quick uh, prototypes, um, some studies in ceramics and glazes. Uh, so, so what is it about Ulster? Uh, you know, you know why study product design with us? Um, well, you know, there's the obvious things like you know we do very well in the National Student Survey you know, employability, um, the fact that we are very sort of proactive in supporting our students undertake placements. Um, we have very good, a lot of the work that you see here um, from our students um, is a result of live projects that we do in the second year. Um, so our kind of links in the local industry and the regional development agencies um, are very good. Uh, but I, I think the biggest thing about Ulster is we're, we're one of the few industrial design courses still in the UK that offers the kind of uh, uh, art college studio experience. Um, so every student has their own space. Um, so you can work on projects, you can build, you can put your sketch work up, you can uh, sort of build prototypes, store things um, in your own space. So you're not hot seated through a space or you're not taught in classrooms and then you go home and work on stuff at home. So, so you, have, you have access to studio space um, uh, for all of the opening hours that the, the, the college is open. Um, and that space you then, you basically have a space for the three, year, three years of college. Um, so, so that kind of studio environment, I can't, can't kind of put enough kind of um, emphasis on how important that is in terms of uh, uh, sort of, uh, the peer learning that takes place in a studio environment. Um, you know, uh, when you go out in the industry and you work as a designer, um, I have never worked on a project where I've worked on it on my own. I'm always part of a team. I'm either a team with people inside a company or I'm in a team of designers uh, working collectively together. Um, so, so that kind of experience of being used to working in a studio space, interacting with people, getting feedback from your peers, you know, um, collaborating with your peers, 
uh, doing group projects um, is really the strength of, of our course and it makes our students very very uh, sort of independent very resilient in terms of taking responsibility for their own sort of learning journey pathway um, so who, who typically comes in the course well I, sa I said before um, you know it, it's typically students from either an art and design or a technology and design background but we do have people who come on the course who maybe have studied other subjects uh, you know uh, psychology oh, we had a girl a few years ago uh, came uh, who had studied psychology at a level um, and she turned out to be absolutely an excellent product designer um, what she lacked for in uh, skills like drawing and making we were able to compensate for when she came on the course uh, but her understanding of people and her ability to frame complex projects uh, complex problems and opportunities um, was really uh, uh, very exceptional um, so uh, don't be put off if you're not necessarily from an art and design or technology and design background um, at interview we do ask that um, you uh, submit a portfolio and that be, can be something that's either done through formal education so it could be the the outcome of your coursework uh, if you're studying uh, BTEC or A level something like that uh, but it could also be if you're someone who maybe is doing subjects that doesn't facilitate that it could be a portfolio that you have uh, sort of generated yourself so it could be some drawings it could be some photography it could be some writing about design uh, but things exhibitions that you want to see etc so, so there are different ways of um, sort of uh, engaging with the program um, uh, so, so yeah typically it's art and design technology and design students and uh, one of the things that uh, is kind of unique to our course is that uh, students who do our course um, uh, they go into a wide variety of, of, of sort of um, employment um, but um, uh, at one end uh, there's those who want to go on and become educators and uh, at the moment, our course is linked directly with the PDCE, both in art and design and technology and design. So on completion of our course, I think we have two, two people um, doing the, the, this, this here, um, you can go on then to train as a technology and design teacher or as an art and design teacher, um, or you can go on and study at master's or doctoral level. Uh, the entry requirements, um, they're online, they're in the handbook, uh, prospectus, um, so I'm not going to them in too much detail. One of the requirements uh, for application is a, a submission of a digital portfolio. And that's really something, that the purpose of the digital portfolio is really is to show us your potential. So you don't need necessarily need to have done uh, product design, you don't necessarily have to have done three-dimensional design, but you need to be able to demonstrate a certain level of proficiency in being able to draw, being able to sort of work to a brief, a creative sort of uh, strategy for um, uh, working through a problem. Um, you need to be able to demonstrate some kind of competency in making or at least an interest in making. And that doesn't necessarily have to be course related again. You know, uh, very often some of the best making we see at interview uh, are, are in portfolios are things that people have done outside of school. So for example, one guy didn't really have very much making in his portfolio, but when we asked him about, um, you know, had he done any making outside of his portfolio, uh, he then went on to tell us he had made a boat with his dad, a fiberglass boat. Um, so that's, that's the kind of, all of that kind of stuff in your digital portfolio is really, really useful. But we're looking, what we're looking for is, is potential in, in that portfolio. When you apply to the course, um, uh, very shortly after you've applied, you'll get um, uh, a document that kind of talks you through what needs to be in the digital portfolio. And it's, it's quite flexible uh, in, in terms of what we're looking for there. Uh, how do you apply to the course? Well, it's uh, through UCAS, um, uh, very straightforward. Uh, Again, this is all covered uh, online and in the handbook, so I'm not going to waste time on it here. Um, uh, yeah, so this is kind of, a, if, you, if you think about our course and the, the different pathways, this, this really kind of uh, gives you an idea of the kind of things that you'll experience on the course. 
So in, in terms of your ability to work in workshops and materials, we, we have very good workshop uh, facilities here. We have a sort of a heavy woodworking workshop, uh, metalworking. Um, we have access to silversmithing and jewellery workshops, to the ceramics workshops. Um, uh, so you get, an, you get an opportunity at different stages throughout the, the course to um, experience working in those materials and to get some kind of an affinity for what you can and can't do in, in, within those materials, the processes associated to them. In terms of making processes, you know, fabricating, extruding, casting, molding, sewing, stitching, welding, laminating, uh, routing, you know, firing, glazing, enameling. These are all things, these are all tools that are there at your disposal and that we can kind of support with technical support, uh, resources, workshops, etc. Um, in terms of technology, well, 3D printing, you saw it in one of their examples, it's fairly um, sort of prolific. Uh, we have some students who use virtual augmented reality to um, sort of uh, uh, enhance their projects. Um, we do look at uh, user experience, experience design, we look at CAD, CNC machining, um, hand machining, hand crafting. Um, and then in terms of how you combine your experience of materials, process and technology together, where does that lead you to? We'll look at the kind of outcomes, the pathways, the kind of career um, uh, options there are then industrial design, product design, uh, service and UX design. And what we're finding is that the process that product designers go through to be able to understand complex uh, problems uh, is called design thinking. And what we're finding is more and more UX design companies um, are employing our graduates, even though they don't know how to code, um, are employing our graduates to do the front end thinking in UX design uh, projects. So dealing directly with the client, um, extracting the information, framing the problem, framing the opportunity, you know, uh, uh, create creative strategies towards uh, sort of uh, creating solutions to problems. So, so um, uh, again, you know, that's the, the course leaves you with very broad transferable skills. And uh, you've, we do tend to find that our students end up in a very wide gamut of uh, career pathways, not just working in a design consultancy or working as a designer within a manufacturing company. So other prospects are furniture design. Uh, you know, we've, um, a number of our students, one from two years ago, went forward, set up his own furniture design company. Uh, it's very much commercial uh, furniture. He's very adept at CNC machining. Uh, so he's set it up on a, almost like an industrial scale. Um, there's the designer maker option. Uh, designer makers tend to make in smaller numbers, maybe bespoke uh, or small batch. Um, and there's a lot more sort of intimacy and relationship in the way that they make. Um, whereas a product designer causes things to be made, makes a design, then he liaises with injection molders and tool makers, et cetera. The designer maker tends to design and then take the project through to completion themselves in, in, in terms of the making. Uh, lighting design is a strong uh, subject within the course. Ceramics, uh, silversmithing uh, and jewelry design, um, just really this year, um, those have become uh, options for students um, in, in terms of uh, pathways. Um, so course structure, uh, first year is very much about um, skills. Um, uh, it's uh, really about getting uh, your drawing, sketching, presentation skills, uh, introducing you to the different software platforms that we use, and also introducing you to the notion of why we design. So you don't design in a vacuum, you need to understand the world around, you need to understand what has happened previously in design so that you can reference what you're doing today with what has gone before. Uh, all of that happens in the first year. These are some of our students on, uh, we, we do a, a team building exercise where we take them off to a forest park in Ross Trevor. Uh, we do a, a residential. Uh, and that's to sort of build a sense of community on the course as well and uh, allow the students to sort of uh, interact socially outside of the classroom uh, sort of environment. We do all kinds of problem solving and physical activities, uh, mountain biking and uh, kayaking and stuff like that. 
Second year is when you begin to develop your pathway and you begin to think about what it is you're, you're going to do. Uh, um, you get more advanced technical work workshops in, uh, that are sort of aligned with your chosen pathway in terms of materials and process, etc. Um, and you begin uh, in your professional practice module to build your portfolio in preparation for um, going out on placement, for finding a placement, going out on placement. Um, there's also in the professional practice module a heavy sort of um, emphasis on sort of entrepreneurial skills. Um, so you'll find that um, uh, there's lots of live projects in the second year and there's also the opportunity to kind of anticipate in different um, sort of uh, business competitions, either internally in the university or externally, people like Santander, etc. Uh, these are our second year students. Um, this year we went over to Amsterdam. This is them at a visit on with it with a, an international designer called uh, Robert Brunwasser. Um, it was a very interesting uh, sort of uh, visit. Uh, he designs everything from uh, transport design through to household items, etc. Um, uh, so it was one of a number of visits we did on the Amsterdam trip, as well as going to different institutions and uh, museums, etc., galleries. Um, in previous years, we've, we've gone up to see the uh, master's course up at uh, um, Eindhoven as well. Um, between second year and third year, you have an optional placement year. Um, so you can go out and do a traditional industrial placement. You find the placement, we help you to do that. We help you to get all of the stuff together to be able to uh, sort of apply for a placement. Um, and we also uh, put you in contact with the companies that our students have previously done placements with. So generally anyone who wants to do an industrial placement will be able to find one. That, that's what our experience has been. And generally it's somewhere between 30 to 50% of students go out on industrial placement. We also then have a number of students who, uh, rather than doing the DPP, which is the Diploma in Professional Practice, they prefer to do the DIAS, which is the Diploma in Academic uh, sorry, Diploma in International Academic Studies, and that's, an, uh, that's by going on an international exchange um, to another university to study um, uh, product design or a, a sort of a associated subject. So you can do that in the US, you can do it in Europe through Erasmus, we have students gone to the uh, Bauhaus School of Art at Weimar. Um, uh, we, last year we had three students studying in the US. Um, we also have kind of peculiar to us a thing called the Business Exchange Initiative, which is a process uh, it, or is a scheme that funds students from Northern Ireland to go to the US and uh, spend a year studying. But instead of studying within their normal area, which would be design, they actually get to study within uh, business and marketing. So they take modules in business and marketing, then they come back and that feeds very nicely into their final year uh, of their degree. Um, these are just some of the companies that we uh, kind of send our students um, out on placement with. Uh, some are Northern Irish based, some UK based. We've had students go as far as Australia, New Zealand uh, for placements as well. Uh, this is um, Lucy Mulholland. Uh, Lucy was one of our students from a few years ago who um, uh, on her placement um, with uh, James Lecky Design, um, she designed and took to manufacture this product which is now out there on the uh, market uh, called Scoot. Uh, and it's a little product that's designed for disabled kids or kids with mobility issues um, that aims to socialize them with their peer group. Um, Lucy started this project as part of uh, a, li a live brief in second year with, with um, uh, James Lecky Design um, and then went, uh, subsequently um, uh, Lecky approached her to come on placement with him. She did her placement with him and during her placement year she developed this right the way through to manufacture. That's it. Uh, this is uh, another this is one of our um, students out on placement, um, uh, Charlotte O'Kane uh, and Charlotte um, uh, work with a startup company called C-Sense. Um, they're, they're a little bit more established now and they design a very innovative, um, it's a cycle light and it uses the kind of technology inside your smartphone 
to do really clever things like um, uh, detect when a car approaches you from behind and it makes the uh, flashing of your light brighter and it pulses it in different rhythms uh, to make you more visible to the approaching traffic. Uh, it can do all sorts of clever things. It's a, it detects, it's a motion, motion sensor and it detects when your bike is being moved. Um, so if you're in having a coffee and someone tries to steal your bike, it will send you a text to your phone to say that your bike has been moved um, and you can go and deal with it. So Charlotte did the product design on this, moldings, uh, lots of testing, lots of prototyping. Um, she also did all of the graphic design on it and she was also responsible for all of the kind of social uh, media side of it, promoting the product as well. So um, again, that's very typical kind of breadth of um, skill set of our, our students. Final year, um, you get to pick a large self-directed project which runs right through the year. Um, and that's really, it's geared around what you want to do in terms of your career. So it might be that if your um, sort of ambition is you've maybe worked with a medical company in, on your placement and your goal is to maybe go into that field, um, then the large self-directed project in third year allows you to pick an area within that subject and to do it in great detail uh, uh, to the sort of level that you've seen in the projects that I've shown you previously. Um, also in the final year, you write uh, an extended essay. It used to be called a thesis. Um, and again, that's part of the contextual studies strand of the course. Uh, and it uh, allows you to explore um, using critical writing, um, the kind of themes and the narratives around the subject area that you're designing in, um, so that um, it kind of informs your design so that you're not again designing in a vacuum. That, that you have a really good understanding of the kind of social and cultural implications of what you're doing in the project. Um, and then finally, in the, in the final year, we do a module called Design Transitions, and it's about um, your exit from the course. So we get you to put together a career plan, we help you put together a career plan, and then we help you with uh, pulling together your e-portfolio so that um, uh, going forward from the course, you're in the best possible position in terms of getting employment and promoting yourself on social media, et cetera. Um, and finally, as part of design transitions, there's the end of your show. And the end of your show is, uh, uh, it's a really great opportunity where the, uh, the whole of the art college is basically turned into an exhibition. Um, and you can invite uh, friends, family, prospective employers, industry into a show that showcases um, your uh, final year work. Um, and it's a great kind of way of disseminating what you've done. And this is Maeve, um, whose uh, final major project was about, um, she developed her own uh, material uh, using recycled shopping bags and uh, linen. Uh, she built a machine to actually process the linen, a carding machine. Um, and she produced this very gossamer like uh, fine material. And then she took that forward to kind of look at it in a number of different applications in lighting and sort of textiles in uh, wall hangings. Uh, I think there's a furniture piece as well. Um, and that was her final project. And this is just uh, her space at the end of your show. Uh, this is Harry. Uh, Harry's very much a furniture designer. He, he went on now. He, he uh, uh, works with a, a joinery comp company in sort of mid-Ulster. Um, uh, quite a large company, very much geared around CNC manufacturing of, of, of products. I think it's for the educational market. Um, and Harry's final year project was uh, around um, designing a low cost uh, sort of flat pack uh, kitchen um, uh, that uh, sort of was very affordable, very democratic and accessible. Um, but the, the key element of it was it that it promoted social eating. So it kind of encouraged people to cook and eat together um, and to kind of reverse the trend that um, we sort of see in society today where everybody eats on their own at different times, et cetera. So it was a re really nice kind of project. And then this is Jenny. Um, Jenny, uh, Jenny was really interested in second year about setting up her own company and she kind of did that. Uh, as part of her uh, sort of professional practice module. Um, uh, as a result of what she did in it, she was able to uh, apply for all kinds of funding, enter all kinds of entrepreneurship competitions. 
Um, and she was able to take, she was, she was able by the time she got to her final year to have developed a range of products. They're equestrian products, uh, sort of equine care products. Um, she was able to develop a product range, a brand and secure funding to do things like uh, go and visit suppliers to get uh, patents into intellectual property protection on her designs. Um, and this is her actually at the Balmoral show. She uh, did a stand at the Balmoral show just to test her product range and get feedback on it. Um, and this is Jenny then at an uh, invent, uh, sorry, uh, investment, Invest NI's uh, Invent um, uh, Elevator Pitch uh, program where uh, Jenny, you can probably, I don't know if you can see her, she's the red haired girl in the very middle. Um, and she uh, she was one of the finalists um, uh, for that and, and actually won it. Okay, that's really everything. Uh, so I think I've, I've kind of, uh, uh, that's at 40 minutes. I'm gonna hand over to Jonathan now. Uh, just to see if there are any uh, questions that I can answer for you. Yep, thanks, uh, Dominic. I must say that was a very fascinating and thorough uh, look at what is obviously a very creative uh, subject. I know I've been at a few end of year shows and through open days and so on. We see some fa fantastic um, pieces of work being displayed. Um, and there was one there, I think, there was, was for a, a child who obviously um, wasn't able to walk. From yes. that, in that particular one, and it was it was just fabulous what what the guys could do on the program, and to have those submitted for awards as well and to be produced also was uh, brilliant. Um, no questions come through on the Q and A, so I've noted a few down here, uh, Dominic, that you might want to just address. And I think it's more obviously for prospective students who, you know, if you're involved in a, in a creative subject, likes of architecture, for example, or product design or fine art and so on. The main question they always like to know is what sort of time uh, does one spend uh, in class, whether it be a lecture, uh, practical or labs, or uh, whether, as I said, depends on the type of course as well. But what sort of time um, would, would students be on site uh, throughout the week? Well, uh, obviously, you know, uh, things are a little bit up in the air at the moment with uh, the COVID situation. Yeah, so that'll I'll, change, talk about, I suppose. I'll, I'll talk about how things normally are. Uh, because we're, we're kind of hoping that that won't impact us for more than maybe a semester. Yeah. Um, so, so quite typically, um, we expect our students to be in studio uh, uh, probably three days a week. Um, and you will have contact with the lecturer for those three days. Um, so uh, typically, um, a studio would consist of, uh, you know, it might, it might be, it might involve group working or it might be small group tutorials. Um, and when you're in studio, you'll be working uh, and then you'll have a period of time when you come together with your lecture, either individually or in a group and um, talk about your work, reflect on your work. Um, you might go off to the workshop to uh, have a look at some materials or some processes, some making, get some assistance with that. Uh, but generally in terms of, we, we say to most of our students that um, really you need to be given three solid days a week um, to the program. Uh, in terms of contact and then you probably need at least one further day where you work on the stuff then uh, so you'll be given a homework to do or you'll just need to progress work from one studio day to the next so for example uh, in first year your studio days might be Tuesday and a Thursday where you kind of need to work the Wednesday so that the work that you've undertaken on the Tuesday has progressed to the point where on the Thursday you can get meaningful feedback and direction on it um, so uh, obviously that changes as you go through the course so by the time you get to third year students are really treating it as a five day a week nine to five we, we really encourage people to work the nine to five cycle and not to be up all night working and not to work weekends and stuff like that um, if you treat it as a nine to five Monday to Friday there's plenty of time to get all the work done um, and then any employment that you're going to undertake you know keep it the evenings and keep it to uh, um, the weekend so you can kind of balance that we're totally realistic that you know people have to be able to support themselves um, so we try to work around people's uh, sort of uh, work arrangements um, uh, as much as we can I think we're, we're very flexible very informal in the way we do it yeah. good stuff and um, I'm just thinking of course of the Belfast development and um, of course that's uh, on the horizon um, will the studio environment be enhanced um, as a part of the new development um, or does it remain an existing uh, block where it is now? 
Well, in, in terms of our studios, I, I think they'll remain where they are. At the minute, we've moved into the space um, that Foundation used to occupy. So we have uh, three or four um, discrete, uh, large classroom type studios, and that really suits us. Previously, we were in an open plan space, and uh, whilst it was a beautiful space, um, uh, product designers tend to be really noisy. Uh, we make things and we tend to mix things together that are toxic and nauseous and all sorts of things. So having us in an open plan space is not really a good idea. So being in slightly more uh, confined spaces now, it just means that we can be a bit more antisocial. We can use power tools and stuff like that. And uh, we have good ventilation in our space so that if we uh, say use adhesives or something like that, you know, we're, we're, we're not causing any problems. Um, but uh, what, one of the things that is going to affect us quite a bit is um, uh, we, we are a sister course to BSC Technology and Design at Jordanstown. Yeah, that's so right. it's, it's, it's another product design course, but um, it's different from ours in that uh, uh, it's probably two thirds engineering, one third design, whereas we're probably two thirds design, one third, you know, sort of technical. Um, but at, with them moving from Jordanstown in their workshops move down, and of course our design students will have access to those workshops as well. So we see that as being a great enhancement. They have, <coughs> whilst we have excellent workshops, they have workshops which include things like five axis CNC machining and you know uh, laser cutting and uh, th things that we maybe have, but on a smaller scale. Um, so we see that as, as an enhancement of our kind of technical support um, once the, uh, the, the campus sort of reforms. Okay, and a lot of the questions I have here, you have um, covered amply. You know, I was gonna talk about placement, um, looking at uh, obviously the application process, uh, interview examples. One of the things we like to highlight is again, the end of your show. And of course, with the current situation, it's hard to say how something like that's gonna play out over the next three, six months and so on. But I wanted to emphasize the importance and uh, of getting along to that show where possible for prospective students and what they can get out of that in terms of seeing examples, maybe chatting to colleagues about their portfolio that they may want to submit as a part of their application um, and get to get a real idea of uh, what would, is, is going to sell them to obviously admissions officers to get onto the program, but also to give them a, a flavor of what they could be producing in the future. Yeah, um, the, the end of your show, uh, we're, we're kind of quite hopeful that by the time we get round to it, it normally happens yeah. in June, that by the time we get round to next June, there'll be some sort of uh, semblance of normality and that yeah. we may have to do it slightly differently and we might have to, you know, observe certain, you know, uh, social Protocols, distancing. Yeah. Um, we, we should be able to do it. But what we've done for this year's students um, is we've actually gone online with the end of your show. So Belfast School of Art um, has their own website um, uh, and on the website um, each student has an area uh, where they've been able to uh, uh, put up a statement about themselves, about their approach to design. Uh, they've been able to put up some images, uh, example of their uh, final major project and then a link to all of their social media and uh, because of our exit module because of our uh, sort of uh, professional practice module in second year, our students are very good in terms of their social media profile and online portfolio, e-portfolio, et cetera. So probably uh, alongside subjects like animation and interaction design, we're not as impact, we're not impacted to the same extent that someone who like fine art or ceramics where you really need to see the finished artifact in your hand or, you know, up close. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a, a very much a created, curated social event around the objects as well. And we're, we're, not, we're not impacted to the same extent. And our students are very resilient. You know, when, when COVID struck, we sort of went, okay, so we're not going to be able to make finished prototypes. Um, so we need to re-gear our outputs for a major project so that they're digital and can be assessed online. And it really, it barely took a phase out of our students. They just went, okay, well, that's the new new and they get on with it. Very, very resilient. Okay, and that's great. And we have, we have last question, which of course is the first question, but obviously we're uh, going to be cut for time here. Um, and see if you can pick the bones out of this question. It's uh, what would you say 
uh, I'm not sure if you can see this actually, Dominic, but what, what would you say the industry requires most, i.e. what career path would you choose if you could go back from design, product design, engineering, architecture, additionally focusing with the least amount of CAD computer work, rather the box thinking, group work, and prototyping with hands, manufacturing. Thank you. I'm not sure what that last bit was, but I'm not sure if you could you, could you pick a question out of that? Okay, yeah. Well, um, uh, I, I, can only, I can only tell you what my experience has been. Um, and I would, I would suggest to people that over the next, oh, if you're 20 now and you're looking, or you're 18, 17, 18, and you're looking at what, what your life is going to be like and how you're going to have a career and all the rest of it, it's very different to what you would have been looking at 20 years ago. Um, I think the thing that you've got to keep in mind is that uh, you will not have a single career. You will have multiple careers within your life and you'll, you'll at different points have to upskill and reinvent yourself. Many of the jobs that you'll be doing in 10 years time don't even exist now because the technology is still being developed, um, is, is only emerging at this point in time. Um, so, uh, I, my advice would be to uh, pick a subject that gives you the most breadth in terms of the transferable skills that you come away with and that gives you a really good opportunity to develop uh, really strong interpersonal skills um, uh, and team working skills. And I think um, my, my own situation was... Uh, I applied to Queens, got, accept, got accepted to Queens to do architecture. An architect, an architect um, in Enniskillen told me it would be really good to do a foundation year because it would open me up to all the kind of possibilities um, within architecture. Uh, it would bring a whole different sensibility to my practice. So I applied to Ulster, did um, a foundation course in Ulster. And about halfway through that, I met an Asian gentleman who introduced me to product design and it changed my life. Uh, product design was everything I'd aspired for in architecture, but I had much more control because I did the making rather than handing the making over to someone else. Um, then when I came to do product design, um, uh, uh, the only way I could do it at Ulster was to do a very broad based course called design and industry. So not only did I do product design, but I did little bits of interior design. I did information graphics. Um, and really, when I came out as a graduate, I went straight in to work for um, it was a company at the time called Nortel, um, uh, Northern Telecom, um, a massive Canadian multinational um, telecoms manufacturer. And I went to work in their head offices in London. <coughs> and what I found was that, you know, on a day when we were, we were developing telephones for British Telecom and there was a photo shoot, and they wanted someone who understood the product to go and uh, supervise at the photo shoot. Because of my generalist background, because I'd been in a photographic studio and I knew how to art direct a photo shoot, um, I was the one who got to go along and do that. Uh, because I'd been on a placement in an injection molding company, whenever there were two, uh, so I just find myself constantly getting to take up opportunities that the really good product design guy from um, Northumbria, um, you know, who was probably in terms of skills was a lot more proficient than I was. He just didn't have the breadth or the flexibility um, to do a lot of the things that I was capable of doing. So, so my advice would, would be to, to pick a, a, an area that gives you uh, breadth while allowing you to, de to develop depth of knowledge at the same time, that gives you really good interpersonal skills um, and the skills to manage and to communicate with other people. That's brilliant, Dominic. Thanks very much. I'm sure that's answered that uh, question thoroughly. Um, look, folks, that's uh, our webinar uh, finished for the day. Thank you very much, Dominic, for taking us through uh, product design. My pleasure. Um, the uh, webinar today has been recorded and should be available on our website at ulster.ac.uk forward slash events uh, at the previous section um, later on this afternoon once my colleagues upload that um, after a little bit of um, editing. Um, and um, Obviously, we have a few more webinars to take place uh, this week uh, and into next week as well. I think we're going to look at uh, how to apply for UCAS and, of course, a general overview of Ulster University plus um, HPAT for those of you interested in um, the health professions uh, aptitude test that we 
um, obviously undertake here at Ulster for those particular programs. So they're all available on the website for you to register for um, at ulster.ac.uk. Um, just to finish off, of course, uh, our initial open days were scheduled for September. Of course, they will now no longer happen. We'll be pushing everything online in a virtual open day, and we're working very hard uh, to make sure that that is as interactive as possible, taking into sort of account like webinars, Q and A's. We'll be using um, uh, all the social media platforms, whether to do webcasts or to showcase the campus as best as possible. Um, That will take place at the beginning of September. More details will be available soon on how to register and what to expect for the virtual open day itself. Now, in terms of getting in touch, our admissions office um, for uh, the Belfast campus programs is at Georgetown as we speak. You can call us there at 0290 or email admissions at ulster.ac.uk. So if you have any queries about your uh, qualifications, you know. Um, a very good platform to use there is uh, Unibody. Um, we have current students on there who are studying across all of our subjects and they can give you an idea of what it's like to, to study in the course, um, what their experience is like, facilities, maybe what their career aspirations are, how they've changed or evolved or why they chose that particular programme. So it's a really good uh, research tool for you to use and uh, to get in touch with students of a like. Um, that's everything for today, folks. Again, thank you for uh, to Dominic for delivering what was a fantastic uh, webinar, very thorough, uh, very informative, uh, for a very creative um, and fascinating course. Um, hopefully, um, we'll see you all soon at Ulster University. But for now, uh, keep safe, and uh, we'll see you all soon. All the best and goodbye.